Hello, Zero K fans, and welcome to Nano Is It Done. I'm your host, Shadow Fury 333, and this first match tonight of a rather short stream, just to warn you guys, it will only be a couple matches today. First match is going to be Faelthas versus Lamateus on Valus Marineris. Faelthas going for Glokibot Factory, Lamateus going for Hovercraft Factory, and we've seen this already, we've seen this play out before where Gloki kind of has to be really clever. I'm curious if Faelthas is going to do the same thing that Anarchid did, because as I pointed out in that game, Anarchid really likes using the actual cloaked units of the Cloaky Bot Factory, the more finicky units, sides and specters and gremlins. We've seen a lot of gremlin use, actually, so yeah. it's That's something that is an Anarchid special. I don't know that Faelthas is going to necessarily do that, and I want to see if Faelthas has to. That's really the question to be answered this game. Does Faelthas have an opportunity to actually win this game using Glaive, Warrior, Rocco? I mean, the thing is, remember, Lamadeus is a really good hovercraft player, so this is going to be quite the test. <clears throat> and at this point, Feldos is committed to the Glaives for now. Their current build order is continuing with the Glaives. I mean, the thing with Val Valus Mananatus is that they probably will go with Glaives for a while. Given the size of the map, it's generally a good idea to do so. The thing is with Glaives, of course, is that Glaives are... Well, they're very fast. That's the biggest thing. You're dealing with an 18 by 12 map, if I'm not mistaken. So you're dealing with something that's bigger than really most maps that are considered 60 by 12, sorry. 16 by 12 map, but it's still considered fairly large by 1v1 standards. Like 12 by 12 is usually the limit before it starts to become ridiculous. <clears throat> and I know there are some maps that are bigger than that, but those ones tend to be the ones where you either get pure raider game for the entire game or you get maps like Comet Catcher where it's just continuing on permanently with this big push on both sides. You end up with this front line that gets right in the center and it all gets locked down and really, really grindy match. Valus Metonators can turn into that, but I find as a rule it doesn't. It's typically a map that focuses more on raiders because of all the hills and all the ways around things. It's a bit harder to set up a defensive line just across the center of the map like in Red Comet, or... Actually, Com Red Comet's pretty small anyway, but that has the same problem as Comet Catcher. Or at least the same general game flow as Comet Catcher. So I'm not surprised both players continuing along with the Raider game. Velthus looks like they're trying to secure the southwest by setting up a defensive area in front, while Lamadeus, on the other hand, actually doing the exact same thing. Both players focusing entirely on the south side of the map, and Feltos is in a very nice position here. They're going to be able to tear apart this Quill. That's the first priority. Get the Quill! Get the Quill! Please get the Quill! There we go. Feltos going for it. That's what they need to do. Get rid of the workers, and then just continue harassing. That will slow down Lamadeus quite a bit. At the same time, Feltos getting rid of Quill over to the north as well. And that's yet another Quill dead. So Lamadeus falling very behind in their economic development. Their expansions are going to be... Well, actually, potentially as fast, depending on how these daggers work. Lamadeus with a counterattack over on the western side of the map, and I don't see anything Felthos has to deal with this. Their commander isn't even upgraded. Their commander's the only thing in the way. The daggers could actually go kill the commander, and at the same time, some glaives coming around the back to try to deal with what they can of Lamadeus' economy. And able to get one more metal extractor at the same time, Felthos' commander chasing away the daggers. The daggers did get a kill, but Lamadeus is still quite a bit behind economically entirely. Like, they basically don't have any reclaim to work with. They've lost most of their constructors, if not all of their constructors. In fact, yes, this is the only quill they have right now. The one they've just built. So, Felthos, nice job putting Lamadeus behind economically. At the same time, though, Felthos hasn't really expanded all that much, and they do have to worry about these daggers coming in here. Although, at this point, it's not working out too badly. The dagger's not even able to get yet another metal extractor, so that works. That being said, though, Lamadeus is still harassing on all sides. Felthos needs to be very attentive. And they are being sufficiently attentive, but I get the impression that Lamadeus has taken the initiative. They're going to be building up, they're going to be setting up the southeast, they're possibly going to be setting up the north as well, like rebuilding that area, because I don't think they expect Felthos to be attacking anymore. Like, Felthos at this point is a bit more on the defensive. They're setting up a few lines in their main base, power plants, to make sure that the daggers can't get in. They have some defenses over there as well, so they should be fine, but I don't see a whole lot of glaives running around. There's like three or four glaives running around here. Lamadeus, on the other hand, They've got four groups of, or sorry, two groups of four daggers each, which is going to be more than enough, along with another couple daggers in their base. Faelthas is going for more harassment. They are, however, not going in the area that's actually being developed. Now, that being said, Faelthas is still ahead. They still have an advantage economically, and they still actually have the time they can spend to build up the lotuses. 
Like, it should, they should build up more defenders and lotuses and just generally have strong defenses. They have the time for that. They have the, the economic advantage going forward. It's getting lost, but still the development time was enough that it can make up for a lot of what they lost. And now Lamadea is finally getting a slight economic advantage. However, quite a bit of reclaim has fallen into Feldos' territory. Feldos, again with the quill attack, but not enough forces to deal with it. Ooh, not a bad dagger, not a great dagger, unfortunately. Sorry, not dagger, tick. A couple daggers got caught, but they're not going to be killed. The cleanup crew is a bit too little too late, unfortunately. And down goes Feldos' conjurer there. Feldos... Now in the same position that Lamadeus was in, Lamadeus with those daggers just doing a way better job dealing with Felthos. I, the problem is that Felthos isn't really going for a whole lot of real anti-raider defenses. Like, defenders aren't enough because they have 300 HP, or sorry, 400 HP. No, 300, that's right. They have 300 HP, but defenders, like, that's one entire defender. And Lotuses only deal 72 damage per second, so it's not really enough against that many daggers. Honestly, I would have liked to see a Stardust. At least inside of Felthos' main base. Like, set up a Sky Dust or something. That way, it just gets rid of the daggers, stops them from attacking. At this point, Lamadeus already has... They have 13 daggers on the field compared to... 9 Glaives. And Glaives are already at a bit of a disadvantage compared to daggers. So I don't see Felthos easily recovering from this. Lamadeus has effectively turned this around. Though nice counter raids coming in here from the north. At least Felthos is not taking this line down. Getting rid of a Quill, getting rid of a Metal Extractor. Not able to do much more damage than that, though. Nothing major, no real blows. But another group of glaives over to the southeast to attempt that. Well, the dagger's coming to the north. Feltos's commander in a bit of a tight spot, but it's not going to matter. Lamadeus either doesn't notice or doesn't care. Goes in for the metal extractors instead, and that's not enough. So Lamadeus right now, they're actually starting to fall behind in terms of their metal count. Like, unit metal... Well, units metal in their base, at least. Like, Lamadeus right now... They have actually gone on par with Feltos. Feltos, oh, they have so much reclaim. Feltos, why aren't you reclaiming? You got 300 metal reclaim. You can do it. You can get all this metal back. And the glaives are... Okay, this is proper micro. This is what you need to do. And Feltos is doing it. Split up the glaives so that the, the daggers can only hit one or two at a time. That way, even though glaives get two shot by daggers, you don't have all of your glaives dying at once. At this point, Felthos once again reclaiming the economic advantage, getting a bit of a territory advantage too. They've taken the southwest fairly convincingly. They have enough defenses at the front as well that daggers aren't going to be able to get in. Bear in mind, there is only like one very specific path that vehicles can take along the backside, and that has not been defended. It's worth pointing out, Felthos still needs to take that. They are, however, taking the reclaim, or at least some of it, I was noticing there. But yeah, Felthos is growing very quickly now. They've managed to get a bunch of conjurers up. They have half a dozen conjurers on the field compared to half a dozen quills. So Lamadeus has recovered their workers. Everything's kind of reset to neutral. Felthos got out of there with a bit of an advantage. I think 14 daggers compared to 8 glaives. The glaives are actually not... Well, they're in an okay position. They're distracting Lamadeus. This is perfect. Felthos would not have liked to have those daggers come in. The, the defenses aren't set up for them. Not along the south side, at least. Not completely. Anyway, the Glaives should not be able to do much damage. There are so many defenses over here. I mean, with just these two defenders, the entire setup of Glaives is basically dead. So I don't see these Glaives managing to accomplish much. What they've really accomplished is pull Lamadeus' forces away from Feltas' base. Like, they died, yes, that kind of sucks, 240 metal, but it's a 240 metal distraction. That means Feltas has the time to set up this Lotus and set up these metal extractors here as well, and just generally set up a stronger position from which they can operate. That's the thing. Also, there we go. There's the reclaim. They are getting it. That's what I want to see. So yeah, Felthos still a bit ahead here. That was actually nicely timed. I don't know if Felthos intended that, though. Let's see. What, what do they have for... Actually, their radar coverage is not that great. They probably predicted it or possibly saw it coming in just because they can see into the pass into this lower area. So, they probably saw daggers were coming in and decided, Oh, hey, whoa, 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 let's not let that happen. But I think that was a coincidence. Useful coincidence, though. Now, with a couple lotuses in place, this is still tricky. So, I'm not sure what to expect from here. Other than... 
And other than more distraction attacks, Veltas going to the north, trying to set up distraction attacks. Lamadeus not bothering with those lotuses, does not want to try to get through them with the daggers, which is probably a wise idea. They are, however, going for scalpels. Finally, we see some scalpels being built up. This is normally the transition. Like, this is the transition I expect to see. This is the transition I expect to see coming out of the Hovercraft Factory. Is switch over to scalpels, and once that's done, then you get a bit more of a consistent effort against glaives. Well, even then, glaives spread out properly against scalpels will still deal with them. So at this point, Failthos is still, like, they're sacrificing a lot of glaives, but they're sacrificing a lot of glaives to break open Lamadeus, and, like I said, still distract things. And all these daggers aren't doing a whole lot of damage. There are enough defenses Failthos has built. Like, this is really what it comes down to. Although, oh, this path here, wide open! It'll only mean the loss of one metal extractor, but that's still going to put the advantage back in Lamadeus' face. Well, uh, sort of. Lamadeus is working with Reclaim right now, so it's... We'll briefly make it Lamadeus' advantage. Felthos' big problem right now is production. Felthos' production is about 50 bill. Oh, never mind. They're good now. They got the build power going in there to the factory. They're good. Could use a bit more power, but not super urgently. They can use all the metal they have. Lamadeus, on the other hand, not really producing as much. And also, I wanted to point out, they were actually building up some flails... And that's not that useful. That's a bit of a bad read. Failthos has not switched over to any air factory yet. I've actually kind of noticed this recently. A lot of top players aren't really switching to air as often as they used to. I'm not sure if it's because of the prediction. I think it largely is because hovercrafts just don't really let air work. Flails are such a powerful anti-air, and scalpels can also work as a bit of a semi-anti-air. Like, they're flex AA as well, so you have all these strong units that are going to completely stuff your air force. It's almost not worth building. And we don't see it very much anymore. So, Lamadeus does have the flails, which does at least discourage Felthos from going to air if they wanted to, but I don't see Felthos doing that. And, okay, fusion reactor. Just to finish this off, a little bit risky. Ooh, that position. That position is dangerous. That's potentially 2,000 damage being dealt to everything around here. Like, everything but the factory would die. So, not sure why Veldas is choosing to build it there. Hopefully that doesn't bite them. That is a potential weakness, because the thing about Lamadeus right now is they are the ones that have map control, or at least air control. And that means they could go for air. They could get some Ravens. They could bomb out a fusion plant if they wanted to. They're probably not going to, because they're having to deal with all these glaives and forget trying to switch over all that metal production to not dealing with these this over here, because, sheesh, they just lost a lot of forces by cost. I mean, every single one of those scalpels was 220 medals. They lost about a thousand medal worth of scalpels with the cost of like 200, 300 medal worth of glaives. That went heavily in Feldhaus' favor. And Aurelius pointing out that Thunderbird's kind of the only good plane. And if you are dealing with anti-air yet, yeah, Thunderbirds are definitely the main plane to use. However, the thing is, four ravens just thrown out there as as an attack to kill something, four or five, four to six ravens just to bomb out something, that's expensive. But if it's a really juicy target, like a fusion plant in the middle of your opponent's base, that could be worth it. Now, I don't see Felthos likely giving that away. At this point, Felthos has taken the center of the map, and we are actually getting a Comet Catcher style grind fest. It's not quite what I expected, but yeah, this is how this is going. And we do see Rockas coming out of Felthos. I should point out now. Failthos has only used, like, one scythe, and only a little bit. Most of their fighting has been glaives. Just very well-placed glaives, and fairly well micro glaives. They just avoided getting too many losses. And honestly, they hadn't had to deal with that many scalpels either. This is the real moment of truth, though. And Failthos is not splitting up the glaives as much as I would have expected them to. They're, they are avoiding the scalpels, which is fairly wise, although the time they were fighting the scalpels, it did work out. So I'd say Failthos' micro is on point enough to deal with that. But yeah, we aren't seeing any cloak units. Basically. So it is possible to beat Hovercraft with cloak, at least on Valus Mananeris, without necessarily using... Ooh, that is painful. Without necessarily using all the cloak units. And the Stardust... Ew, it's not going to get finished. That was so close. That was the right choice, but just the wrong timing, sadly. It's the entire north side. Ooh, Fail Toss is open in the north side. They've got... They've got enough of a buffer in their, their, in their economy. They can still stay ahead of Lamadeus, even if they lose that north side. The center, however, is a bit more important. If they lose this, that's going to be a major problem. And these glaives are kind of lined up. They're not getting too many hit at a time, though. That's still value. 
I stole a lot of value, actually. Holy crap. And Lamadeus, I should point out, still doesn't have their units on, or the halberds, rather, on the hold fire or return fire states. Still fire at will, so the halberds' armor isn't really helping much. Not to mention the glaives over to the north, or sorry, the daggers over to the north have been dealt with, so they dealt some damage. Veltos didn't take too much damage as a result, but they still have an economic advantage. That's the important thing for Veltos. Lamadeus, on the other hand, I'm a bit surprised they aren't switching to air. I'm really surprised that we haven't seen any gunships, we haven't seen any planes. More so gunships, because the thing is, is that, yeah, gremlins could come up, but Lamadeus has air control. However, Lamadeus just does, may not have a commander pretty soon, just managing to bury it into a hole at the last second. But yeah, all these flails here, they are kind of useless. And four flails coming in, not doing all that much. I'm a bit surprised, honestly. At this point, Feltos basically just throwing units in. This is a meat grinder. This is Feltos playing the meat grinder. They figured they have the economic advantage. They can win the war of attrition. They can throw away units. They can donate metal if they have to. They will still get, ultimately, an economic advantage, or at least a military advantage. They still have the economic advantage. Although the reclaim could be turning against them. They are, it's close enough that if Lamadeus reclaims smartly, then yeah, we could still see this turn around. However, Lamadeus losing the penetrator, that is huge. And they don't have a whole lot there to reclaim. They have the commander, yes, but the commander is so under fire. Until that, ooh, until that is done. The Stardust is complete, so the, north, the southeast side is pretty much protected. But I don't think Belthos cares. The point is they broke Lamadeus' army. They broke enough of the army that basically... Okay, so we have 18 units coming in here, like 10 daggers, 3 flails, 5 scalpels, compared to 43 units. Compared to, like, I think this is, like, 20 or so glaives and another dozen Roccos. I mean, this can basically deal with everything that Lamadeus has. Even with the scalpels. As long as the glaives are far enough apart, and this is the thing, this is the micro. This is the thing you gotta do against scalpels, is keep your glaives from getting too bunched up. And that's exactly what Feldhaus is doing, and it is working beautifully. I mean, sides work too, just because they do avoid getting hit until they get close. But yeah, properly micro glaives, that is the trick. It's a bit of a weird trick. It's not a very 0k-ish or total annihilation-ish trick, but yeah, proper micro. Just micro units properly, and it gives them lots of value. That's sort of a thing about the Cloaky Bot Factory. The Cloaky Bot Factory benefits massively from good micro. And that's what Veldas is showing us right now. I mean, Veldas is basically overwhelming Lamadeus right now. There isn't much that Lamadeus can do with the units they have. I wonder if this game is going to change the meta overall. Because we can see that Cloaky can deal with hover without actually too many problems, at least on certain maps. I'm a bit surprised we haven't seen any switchovers. Like I said, we're seeing pure hover this entire time. I'm a bit surprised we are just seeing pure hover this entire time. But I think that that might change. I just am surprised. And Felthos, wow, they're getting ballsy. They're going for an airplane factory. I just mentioned how really there aren't a whole lot of airplanes that are great, but we could see Thunderbirds. That wouldn't be a bad idea. And like I said, there are flails up, but I guess after all this flail destruction, I mean, Felthos knows the flails exist, but also knows that most of them have been broken. They're lying in wrecked heaps on the ground, so, yeah, there actually isn't much motivation not to go air. At any rate, that is going to be game, so Lamadeus throwing in the towel. I am very surprised they did not go for air themselves, because, like I said, they had the opportunity. They had air control for the most part. They could have taken it. At any rate, Felthos, with just metal economy advantage the entire time, uh, not much excess, actually. For a 20-minute game, only 600 metal excess. That is always impressive. But yeah, Felthos just had this advantage the entire game. Unit value was always slightly advantageous. Metal produced and used was always slightly advantageous, although for the most part it was relatively even. Metal income, same thing. It was relatively even, but still slightly advantageous for Felthos. But a lot of it was just that unit value. Like, unit value is the main advantage. So metal produced is almost identical, especially for the first half of the game. It's actually slightly behind for Felthos. Unit value is almost consistently ahead. Because unit's loss is almost consistently behind. Like, Felthos... They did lose fewer units, though for some reason Lamadeus also killed more units, somehow. But yeah, Felthos kept most of their units for the first part of the game, until near the end where they were just had a massive economic advantage and just go with it, or large enough economic advantage, and could just go with it. Like, this is about the point where they started to lose a lot of units. But until then, they actually didn't have any problems. It was actually relatively even. All they had to worry about was making sure that they didn't have any disadvantageous trades. 
and glaives can be burned. Phoenixes are still somewhat useful. They're not the most useful, I agree, but they're still somewhat useful. Or, of course, you could go for gunships and have rapiers, and rapiers just wreck glaives. Because rapiers wreck glaives. They're more expensive, yes, but they wreck glaives. They one-shot glaives. If, or at least they did. Anyhow, that is going to be the first game. So the next game and last game for tonight is actually a request that I got. So there were some questions about where you can request stuff from me because I'm not always in the... in the 0k chat. So first off, I'm always in the Discord because there is a 0k Discord now. I'm always there. And there's also Twitter and such, which you can just get from this screen right here. So yeah, that's another way. So this was actually requested over Twitter. It's the first request over Twitter I've gotten, come to think of it, but that's what it was. So it's actually going to be a 3v3, which for the record is the biggest I'm willing to do in general. I think I did one joke 6v6 at one point, but yeah, as a rule, 3v3 is the biggest I'm willing to go, but it's basically by request only. And also, it's not necessarily going to happen. Just so you know, 1v1 is the only kind of request I really say, yeah, request it, I'll do it. 2v2, 3v3, I'll probably do it, but no promises. Anyway, that'll be next, so stay tuned for that. It'll be up in a couple minutes.